Hello, this is Dan Lewis, and I will be taking you on a virtual tour of some of the artifacts in the British Library and the British Museum in London, England. These artifacts are linked with the study of the Bible, and at various times I have taken students from the schools of biblical studies through both the British Library and the British Museum, students from England, uh, Holland, and Germany. So, welcome to this, uh, this virtual tour. I hope this is helpful to you in your biblical studies. I will be announcing the slide numbers uh, as they change. Slide number two. The British Library uh, is one of the institutions in England which houses extremely important and rare manuscripts of the Bible. And two of the most important are Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Alexandrinus. We'll be talking about those two in just a moment. But they also house things like the Lindisfarne Gospels. Uh, they also house uh, displays of the Wycliffe Bible translation, which was about a century or so before the Reformation, and also uh, the Bible translated by William Tyndale. All of these were extremely important in the history of the translation of the English Bible. Particularly, however, we want to look at Codex Sinaiticus, Alexandrinus, and the Lindisfarne Gospels. Slide 3. This is a page from Codex Sinaiticus. This particular Bible is the oldest complete Bible uh, in existence. Uh, and by oldest complete Bible, I mean the oldest Bible that contains all of the books of the Old Testament and all of the books of the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the books are, of course, from the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible into Greek, which was made a couple of centuries before the time of Jesus. The New Testament, of course, was written in Greek originally, and together these form the oldest complete Christian Bible. Uh, you'll notice, of course, that this is uh, not only a Greek Bible, and of course all of this, uh, th these early manuscripts are going to be in Greek, uh, but it is also written in what is called an unsealed text, which means it is written in all capital letters. This uh, type of writing was popular after the Edict of Constantine, which legalized Christianity, and you will notice that the script is written without any spaces between the words, there is no punctuation, and so things like word spacing, sentence structure, uh, the beginning and end of sentences, those sorts of things were left up to the reader to decipher as he was reading this particular text. This is one of the two most important ancient texts of the complete Bible, the other being Codex Vaticanus, which is in the Vatican Library in Rome. Next slide. Slide four. The page that I just showed you is a page of the book of Numbers, chapter 23, which includes some of the oracles of Balaam. But especially what I wanted to point out about this manuscript is that the Codex, Sati uh, Vatic uh, I'm sorry, the Codex Sinaiticus uh, text is now available in a digitized version online uh, through what was called the Codex Sinaiticus Project. And it has been available online since uh, the year 2009. This digitizing of the entire text of this codex was the cooperative effort of the Leipzig University Library, the British Library in London, St. Catherine's Monastery in Egypt, and the National Library of Russia. And together they collaborated in making available all of the pages uh, of, this, uh, of this manuscript, and it is now viewable online. Uh, you could simply Google uh, Codex Sinaiticus Project, and you will find it online. Slide 5. This is St. Catherine's Monastery at the foot of Jebel Musa, the traditional site of Mount Sinai, and the monastery is the place where Codex Sinaiticus resided for uh, several hundred years before it eventually came to the attention of European scholars and through a rather circuitous route ended up in the British Library in London. Initially, it uh, was taken to Russia. Uh, it was photographed in the early 1900s in Russia prior to the Russian Revolution. And then after the Russian Revolution, the codex was sold to the British Library, uh, where it has resided ever since. 
St. Catherine's is an Eastern North Orthodox monastery, and it is the uh, site of a number of ancient manuscripts that have been kept there for many hundreds of years. Slide number six. This codex dates to about the 4th century AD. Prior to the Edict of Constantine, uh, which legalized Christianity, many biblical manuscripts of the early Christians were collected and burned because Christianity was an illegal religion for that period of time. Once Christianity became legalized, however, uh, large print copies of the Bible were made for churches, such as this one, Codex Sinaiticus, and while we don't know everything about its, its complete origin, we can date it fairly securely in about the 4th century AD. The fact, of course, that it contains both the Old and the New Testament is very important for us. It also is probably worth pointing out that this manuscript also contains the Apocrypha, which are intertestamental writings uh, written by the Jews between the Testaments and that are canonized in the Orthodox Church and also in the Roman Catholic Church. And then in the New Testament, it also includes uh, two other early Christian writings, one called the Epistle of Barnabas and the other called the Shepherd of Hermas. Both of those seem to be very valuable writings in the early Christian communities. And while they, in the end, were not canonized as part of Scripture, they still are part of the witness and testimony of the early church at that time. Next slide, slide 7. This is Codex Alexandrinus. This particular codex, which is uh, designated by the capital letter A, was in the Patriarchal Library of Alexandria for many hundreds of years. It also, like the previous manuscript, is written in unsealed text. It is written without word spacing or punctuation, as we saw in Codex Sinaiticus. But it was also a very important Bible that uh, came to the attention, especially of English scholars, after it had been donated to England as a gift in the time of James I. And from that time, it has resided in England, in the British Museum or the British Library. Uh, this particular codex was quite important in the translation of the King James Version of the Bible as one of the texts available to scholars at that time. Next slide. Codex Alexandrinus uh, is a 5th century manuscript and while it is about a hundred years old, uh, early, um, I'm sorry, a hundred years later than the time of Codex Sinaiticus, uh, it has uh, been a very important witness to the early text of the New Testament. As you notice in this slide, it was presented uh, uh, to Charles I in 1627, deposited in the British Museum in 1757. And even though it was uh, late in coming to England, in fact, a little later than the actual translation of the King James Version, there were important features of this manuscript that were known to the translators and were embodied in uh, what is called the Byzantine text, uh, which underlies the translation of the King James Version of the Bible. Of interest also is that this manuscript contains 3rd and 4th Maccabees, which are not, in fact, in Codex Sinaiticus. And it contains some extra psalms at the end, uh, including uh, 14 uh, uh, songs at the end of the book of Psalms, as well as Psalm 151, a small psalm that deals with the life of David. Slide 9. This is what is called a carpet page, or a facing page, of the Gospel of Matthew from the Lindisfarne Gospels. The Lindisfarne Gospels was the production of uh, the missionaries who came from Ireland to northern England uh, in the 7th century AD to build a monastery and to spread the gospel. And they built a monastery on what is called Holy Island, Lindisfarne, which is uh, an island that can only be reached uh, by crossing a causeway at low tide. At high tide, the island is uh, isolated then from the mainland of England. In this monastery, they paid special attention to the writing of scriptures, and the Lindisfarne Gospels is a very elaborate uh, copy of the Latin Vulgate, which was translated by Jerome. The interesting thing about this gospel is that not only is it a Latin gospel, but in between the lines of the Latin, in about the 10th century, there was added to it an interlinear text of Anglo-Saxon. 
So in that sense, it is one of the earliest uh, attempts uh, to translate anything into English or a form of English uh, in the English Bible. And so from about the 10th century on, uh, the Lindisfarne Gospels has served as an early witness of the Anglo-Saxon translation from Latin of, uh, of the Gospel of Matthew and the other Gospels of the New Testament. Slide 10. The monastery at Lindisfarne actually can still be visited today, as can all of the sites that I've mentioned. One can go to the British Library, and there one can see the texts of uh, Sinaiticus and Alexandrinus displayed in a special room that is just off of the entrance of uh, the British Library, where there are a number of religious texts displayed. In the north of England, you can actually go to Holy Island. You can cross the causeway at low tide with permission, and you can view the monastery and uh, uh, all of the ruins that have been there for several hundred years. So this ends the first lecture of the British Library, and in our next lecture, we will be looking at artifacts beginning with the British.